part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's... This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birdwine. You're listening to The Krypton Report. Welcome to the Krypton Report Podcast. I'm your host, Tyler, the Superman of Blue, the man of tomorrow. And with me is that cuddly teddy bear of a man, James, the Superman of Red, <laughs> the man of steel. I can't keep a straight face, man. Uh, welcome, James, Mr. James Cole. Hey, uh, you know what? I run, I run hot. So <laughs> this is like a good thing come winter. It is. All the ladies come around. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Today we are working on, we thought it'd be fun to look at Superman, just animated films. And we're going to kind of rank and talk about the different Superman based animated films. And since we're talking animation, we brought in the Superman from down under Mr. Nate McKenzie. What's up, man? Hey guys. Thank you very much for having me back on the podcast. Uh, I'm great. Always grateful to be here, and I always love talking about Superman, especially in animation, so I'm looking forward to today's episode. Exactly, and since we're ranking things, I couldn't help but bring in the man who ranks everything and will always ask you what your favorite is, or pick it or kick it, good old now rechristened Godzilla boy Solomon. What's up, man? We're going for town, guys. We're going for town. (laughs) And, And today was a good day. Hi, guys. I'm so excited to do this. So, I got my rankings right now. I got a haircut yesterday. I went to two part two party days in a row. Awesome. Awesome week, everybody. It has been an awesome week. Except for me and my really sprained, swollen ankle that I got breaking up two high schoolers fighting and I slipped in the mud because it was so wet outside. <laughs> um so my foot's been killing me, but oh, I didn't, I didn't hear about that one. Yeah, we, I, I saw the you, you. I saw you broke up. You said you broke up a fight, but um, yeah, I slipped real bad. I didn't realize how swollen and sore it was until really later that night and the next day. Um, so that's that sucked, but I'm good. So here's what we're doing. We looked at all the animated films that were released, even if it was a couple TV episodes. If it was released as a film. We looked at that as a Superman film. Now, we had previously done with Nate um, a look at all the DC animated films. And today we've kind of just know there's like 14 Superman animated films. And I'm going to put the description, the rank tier in the show notes so you can do it yourself if you would like. And what we're going to look at is we'll each go around with the order of the films and talk about where we put it. If you want to describe why we put it there, that's fine. And then what we'll do is we'll kind of average it and we'll make a collective podcast ranking. All right, everybody, we good? Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm pumped. I, I, I feel like I, I feel like um, I, I feel like I can wrestle somebody right now. You can wrestle somebody. Uh, <laughs> guys, help! Help! Someone's beat me up. <laughs> Um, but so what we'll do is I'll name the film and we'll start. We'll go Nate, James, Solomon, and then I'll go last. E O E O. Okay. So without further ado, we'll kick this off with the first film that's kind of in our order is Red Sun, and we'll start with you, Mister Nate McKenzie. All right, Red Sun. Um, I must admit, when this first came out, I was really excited. Uh, I remember I actually. When I first heard about the comic uh, many years ago, when I started reading comics a lot, I actually, I was living in Sydney at the time. So I went to a comic book shop that was close to where I was living, put it on on, on order. I, I bought it and it was probably the first comic book I ever read, actually. Um, so I was very excited to get this uh, animated movie. Uh, and I actually watched it again just recently um, when I knew I was doing this podcast. And actually the second time watching it, I actually probably enjoyed it a lot more. Uh, than the first time I watched it. Uh, obviously, there's, diff- there's differences between the comic book and this, obviously, because it's adaptation. But overall, I gave it an up, up, and away of our, of our score. So a B 
Um, so that's how I rated it. I uh, enjoyed it. Um, very dark for an animated movie, uh, obviously, because it's supposed to, because of the storyline. Uh, but, but yeah, in the end, um, I enjoyed the movie again. Um, and yeah, up, up and away for me. All right. Up, up and away from Mr. Nate mckenzie yeah Woo! so before we go any further like uh for for those listening we our tiers uh we have named is super is like an a up up and away is like your b cornfield is your mid road your c phantom zone is your d and kryptonite is a fail <laughs> yep Yep. I was I was like, that's a good call, James. I was about to say that. Like I totally forgot that. My mistake, everybody. <laughs> oh, it's all like, right. Maybe, <laughs> I was like, maybe I should uh tell people this. And I didn't. So Um, well, uh me next with Red Sun. Um I put I really enjoyed it. Um I had a good time with it. Uh it's not one I got to revisit recently, so um from what I can remember i know i watched it a couple of times when i had first gotten it but um i put it at a cornfield okay just middle of the All road right. like it was really good i like it i mean the only ones that i don't like on this list is kryptonite so yeah <laughs> and then and then i just want to throw this out there that my, for some reason when i was uploading everything the collage that was made for the cover art got put in with the uh the rankings <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so it's it's there. It was an accident. I didn't mean to. All right, Solomon. Red Sun. Where do you have Red Sun, buddy? That I never watched this, yeah, but I've heard of it. You watched it. It's just been a while. We were gonna rewatch as many as we could, but we just been busy. But yeah, go yeah, ahead and talk I about it, pal. Remember it. But I put it in Phantom Zone. I I I thought it could be in Phantom Zone, so I put it in Phantom Zone. Okay. Phantom Zone. I um I like the comic. I I actually like the film better than the comic for, for on the most part because of some of the beats and we talked about that years ago. But I ended up putting it in Cornfield. Um I feel like it's good. It's not great. It's not when I revisit and I think that's the same thing with the comic is cuz I like it. It's cool. Um so looking at it, Solomon did Phantom Zone. James and I both did Cornfield. Nate did up, up, and away. So that would kind of average to a cornfield. We agree? Yeah. Right. Mm. Okay. So that's where we kind of place it as the podcast uh, agreement. All right. The second one is... is Batman Superman Apocalypse. And like I said, I don't have any Justice League on here. It's all more Superman focused or world's finest because it is kind of split between them. So Batman Superman Apocalypse. Nate. Um, this is probably one I've watched a, a, a million times. I remember when it first came out, really enjoyed it uh, after Superman, Batman, Public Enemies, um, when they first started bringing all these adaptations out. Uh, it confused me a little bit because when, when you watch the first, and we'll talk about Public Enemies shortly, the fact that the animation style changed from movie to movie, even though we mm. had similar voice actors and stuff like that. I like how they brought in, you know, Kara, they brought in... Um, Dark Side and you know, Wonder Woman and they had that almost like a Justice League feel to it. Um, overall, though, I enjoyed the movie for what it was, but I think I had to rate it a, a cornfield. I think they could have done so much more with this movie. They could have almost made it the two-part if they wanted to go into a lot more detail. I, I just feel in some p- parts of the movie, it, it felt rushed. Um, they could have slowed it down a little bit, but, but like I said, it's a really enjoyable movie. It's something I'll watch over and over again. So yeah, but overall for me, it's a, corf- a cornfield, a C. Okay. Hey, there is nothing wrong with your opinion. I've been talking to Solomon a lot about just learning that, you know, it's your opinion, you know, um, doesn't make it right. Doesn't make it wrong. It's how you feel when we've been working on that. So never be ashamed of what you feel is correct. All right, Mr. James Col- Colton is your turn. All right, James. Um, so, I mean, like he brought up, it's like, it's the sequel to Public Enemies. Um, It was in the same comic run. Uh, I actually, so when these movies came out, um, I was really excited. And these two actually have a really good um, kind of a connection for me. Because it's when I started to buy some more trades. 
bought Public Enemies. I bought Supergirl. I bought, you know, I mm-hmm. I, I was I was reading this arc, uh, the these arcs written by um, uh, Jeff Loeb and you know the different artists. Um, but uh, you know they, I mean, we got Kevin Conroy, Tim Daly, Summer Glau as Supergirl, um, Andre as as um, Dark Side. Uh, you know, so much action. They go to Themyscira. There's Furies fighting on Apocalypse. Um, the fight on the the Kent farm at the end. It's uh, I really. This is something I've seen, like you said, a, a million times. Um, but uh, it's definitely up, up and away. Okay, Solomon, Superman, Batman, Apocalypse. Honestly, I've watched this one a lot. I'm I I enjoyed it. It's entertaining. I like it. Like it's a very good. It's a very good movie. So what'd you put it as, buddy? Um, I put it as up, up and away because I just I feel like it should be in there. So I put it in up, up, up and away. Up, up and away. I put it in cornfield. I like it. It's good. I feel like the art does reflect the uh, the uh, what do you call it? The comic, but I feel like it could have it could have made it more of like a sequel to Public Enemies, where we really felt that connective issue, that tissue. Um, but it's enjoyable. I'll, and I think we are kind of at a two-two split, so we'll put it in up, up, and away. What do you guys think? Yep, I'm. Also, I agree with that. Yeah, sounds good to me. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll always we'll always go towards a positive, you know. Uh, the next one is Superman <laughs> Unbound, Mister McKenzie. Uh, this is another one that, uh, again, when they, all these movies come out, pretty much every year, very excited to watch. I love the fact the introduction of Brainiac. Um, like I said, at that time, I hadn't read many comic books, so my only real interaction with Brainiac was through the animated series, and very different take on, on Brainiac, obviously, in this movie, which is more like the you know the one that was brought out in the comic books a lot earlier. Um, again, it's one of those movies I really enjoyed. Um, you know, I was watching uh, the TV series Castle at the time when this came out, so a lot of the, yeah. you know, Stana Kartik is uh, Lois Lane, I think, um, I think Nathan Fillion's daughter plays Supergirl in it as well. So I was going yep. to that stage where I really enjoyed the fact that, you know, the TV show I was watching, some of those characters were coming across as boy dancing. Um, you know, they must have spoken to Nathan Fillion, obviously, because he used to voice Green Lantern as well. So that was pretty cool. Um, the movie itself was good. But I think, again, it was just one of those ones that they just tried to do too much in the movie. Um, I enjoyed it for what it was again. Um, I think Matt Boomer was the voice of Superman, and there's also talks at that stage he was going to play live action superman so that was interesting but yeah overall um i gave it a, a cornfield um but again another movie i can put on and watch and enjoy as well all right mr cole um superman unbound i mean the the brainiac story adapted into uh, jeff john's brainiac story adapted into uh animation uh there were some really awesome stuff in there. I'm glad, you know, we got Supergirl in it. Um, Matt Bomer as uh, Superman was great. I could have saw him, you know, as Superman when he was being cast uh, Mm -hmm. uh, back, back then. Um, Obviously he's been in Doom Patrol and he is the uh, tomorrow verse flash. Uh, So, I mean, yeah, very good casting. Um, it was a really good movie. I gave it an up, up, and away. Awesome. All right, Solomon, what you got? This one I've lo- watched a lot. This one was also... I very, very like this one. I'm not saying it's super... I say it's up, up, and away <laughs> today. Um, This one, you know, a little spoiler here. Um, this one will be our Superman Day movie of the this year because it will be celebrating its 10 year this year. So just like we kind of did a little Superman Day video last year and talked about things, this will be the film that we will as a family watch for Superman Day. 
And I teetered between cornfield and up, up and away. Like I went back and forth because last year for Father's Day, my boy here, Solomon, got me the book that it was based on. And I reread that. And you know what? I appreciate this movie a lot more. And I'm going to put it as up, up and away. So our ranking is going to be up, up and away. Yep. All right. So the next one is Brainiac Attacks. I'm Mr. McKenzie. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> um, so just for those um, who haven't listened to my podcast. Um, when I As you all doing, should. As you um, all should. When I finished doing uh, the animated series, I started doing the movies. And the first movie I spoke about uh, was actually this movie. And uh, um, let's just say from a animation standpoint and mostly a, a voice acting standpoint, it was a bit, a bit of nostalgia. Uh, we had majority of the voice actors come back. And unfortunately, one of the two main voice actors for this series, that being uh, for Lex Luthor and Brainiac, uh, Clancy Brown didn't return and the voice actor for Brainiac didn't return. And just, just missing those two actors, voice of those characters, not only were they voiced by different voice actors, but they the, the characters changed. So Lex Luthor was just a different character altogether. Uh, Brainiac just had a different way of how he went about things. And, and if you actually read a lot about this movie, it, it's in no way um, an addition to the animated series. You, you can watch this and, I, and it's not even aligned with the animated series. It was very disjointed, very hard to watch. Um, I only watched it for the podcast. That's <laughs> the only reason why I watched it. Uh, unfortunately, this is a kryptonite in E for me. All right. All right. James. Uh, same. <laughs> Same. Solomon, your turn. Um, I put it in Phantom Zone. I just I thought it could be in Phantom Zone. Okay, I put it in Kryptonite, and there's nothing more to say than what Nate said. <laughs> I watched it. I watched it last time when we did our um. Put that sucker in Kryptonite, Solomon. There's three <laughs> Kryptonites right here. It just it's like it tricks you because you think it's Superman the animated series. It. And um, put it right here. And um, I watched it when we were doing Krypton the series when Brainiac was showing up. We did the two Superman Unbound and this one, and I was like, I it was a struggle to get through. All and right, and we're gonna be collective. Yep, tell them. In Kryptonite. In Kryptonite. <laughs> That's where it deserves to be. <laughs> okay. Next Superman film is uh, Reign of the Superman. All right. Um, or did we this... split the, we split the death into two parts as two yeah. separate films. Just for people listening, I I didn't want to do it as the one film, um, because of how this is done and how it was two different directors, two different script writers and stuff. So Reign of the Superman, Nate. Um, I think when we spoke about, when we went through all the DC animated movies, uh, it was even a, a difference when we spoke about it back then as well. And I've changed my thought a little bit as well after rewatching it not too long ago. Um, we'll talk about Death of Superman in a second. I really enjoyed this movie. I love the fact that when they broke these two movies up, this is almost, uh, you know, a, a brought back of the original comic that came out when they had the Justice League. They brought back, obviously, you know, all the the Superman that were, were part of the death of Superman, which is fantastic. We'll talk about Superman doomsday in a second as well. Um, but I gave this an up, up and away. It was, it was fantastic. I love the fact that it was a continuation of with the story. And I think it needed to be broken down into two parts and they did it really well. So yeah, an up, up and away for me. All right, Mr. Cole. Um, Reign of the Superman. Uh, so just, I mean, it's a great movie and you know, they did, a. Uh, a lot of work uh, to put so many um, characters into into one film. Um, it's really it is really good, um, but you know, on this list, it drops just a little bit. Um, it's a cornfield for me. Um, as as a separate movie, you know, coming off of how great the death of Superman. Oh, oh don't talk about how great. No, no, no. This is not great. No, 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 no. If anybody knows, they already know how great the death of Superman is. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, it's it's something I will absolutely watch um, as a second part to the death of Superman, or watch it as the whole of the death and return of Superman. Um, and that's that's more often than not how I will watch the the reign of the Superman, and that is why it's a cornfield. Other than that, I mean, it's still a great movie. All right, Solomon. I put it in, in super. The old special effects, all of the good stuff. I was like, I can't even get this even more. <laughs> I, I love this movie. You like it because it has the cool Superboy, and it's got steel. And I like steel. I like Superboy. I like. Oh, uh, let me see what else is there. Yeah. I like the freaking. Um, <laughs> the Eradicator was cool. I like the Eradicator. Uh, I'm, I'm looking right now. Um, I was like the fi- how they put Cyborg Superman as like the real Superman. Like people think it's the real Superman, but it's really not. Okay, so so we got a cornfield from James, an up, up, and away from Nate, and a super from Solomon. Wow. Um. I teeter between up, up, and away and cornfield, but I did go with cornfield for it. And here, and my my reason I won't spend a whole lot of time is I just I love the designs, I love the characters, I love the actors. I feel like um, there's just something in the story I think that makes it feel like it drags a little. Um, I can't really pinpoint it, um, but I I enjoy it. But it's not like my default film. I don't know. I kind of I don't know. I can't pinpoint, but it's still a really good film. But, but as a collective, we'll put it in up, up, and away for the podcast. Yeah, right. it deserves be- it. It deserves it. I won't. I won't contest. Like I said, it's it's <laughs> it's in relation to this list and it being a separate film. This it- next film should be the fastest one we ever rank. The death of Superman. Nate. Super. James. Super. <laughs> Solomon. Super. Tyler. Super. Okay. Next up. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was so fast. We also. Surprised. I was like, "There's." I mean, we've talked about it till we're blue, um, but yeah, it's so it's that, it's like it is pretty much one of the best Superman movies ever. Um, uh, so so many good bits drawn from so many different places. They um, they they improved the comic book storyline. I'm sure if they yes. had, I'm sure if if this was the lineup they could have used at the time, they would have preferred to use the heavy hitters because it doesn't make it doesn't make nearly as much impact yeah, when Doomsday I... runs through a bunch of C-listers. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Some might even argue less than that, but I might I, argue better. <laughs> I I also love the part where um super like <laughs> Lex Luthor was beating up Doomsday and just Doomsday's like woo <laughs> and, and just boots up Lex. Oh, Nate! I don't know if I sent you the picture. Um, Solomon, we were at a comic book store in Kentucky, and Solomon found a old animated series Doomsday figure. And I got it. Oh wow! Yeah, it was like in it was in their like dump bin because the arm was broken on it, so he got it for like two bucks. So I glued the <laughs> arm back. And wow. he has it. He loves Doomsday, so Excellent. I gotta send you that. I gotta send you that photo. Like, yeah, be awesome. and speaking of Doomsday, I'm looking at the Batman Doomsday. Right yeah, I got now. that right there. Okay, all right. I dude. can't wait till McFarland does a real Doomsday. Oh, dude, it, Mega okay. big. It be, yeah, I'll say it better be as big as Swamp Thing. I got <laughs> uh, Jania got Swamp Thing for the, for for Christmas from the kids, and just a comparison, like I have Steppenwolf. And Dark Side, Solomon has Killer Croc, and Swamp Thing's still taller than all of them. Mongol's pretty big. Like I, I actually have to get my Dark Side down and see how they compare standing next to each other because the Mongol package is bigger. So they need to do a. Like, I'm very surprised they didn't do it this year, being the anniversary of the death. Um, because that's the figure that I would have to buy. And it needs to be, like you said, it needs to be a mega figure. It needs to tower over, like, uh, just a regular 7-inch Superman. 
So it needs to be a good 12, 13 inch figure. I feel I feel like the figure should be up about right here. Okay. Just a little bit taller than Swamp Thing. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Let's keep on moving. The next one is technically Superman, the last son of Krypton, which was packaged in and released as a movie. I had the VHS in a clamshell. I got it for Easter. Uh, it is the first three episodes of the animated series. So we'll start with Mr. McKenzie. <laughs> I think this is no brainer coming from me, considering the the podcast that I do. Uh, it's a it's an a, a super for me. Um, I still believe this is one of the you know, even though it, it is part of the the series, I think it's it's a good start to any series that they've brought out um, in the past or in the future. Um, you know, they could have adapted this into a a, a live action movie um, in some parts, but uh, I love the, I love the start of the series. I could watch it over and over again. We've, I think we've spoken about it as well. Um, you know, the three part of just the fact of the way they break it down was almost, almost, it was almost like watching Superman, the movie again, when you've had Krypton, Smallville and Metropolis, um, great introduction. And yeah, I'll, I'll always uh, give it a super for me. All right, James. Yeah, um, I mean, it's a cornfield for me, but that's only because in relation to this list, I mean, it's it's an origin story. I mean, we got we got Krypton, we got Smallville, we got uh, Metropolis, uh, introduction of Lex Luthor and John Corbin, uh, our future Metallo, um, Lois Lane, Jimmy Olsen, like, it's, it's a great it's a great movie it's a great first three episodes it's a great origin story um uh like honest i i've watched i've watched those three episodes more than most episodes of the entire series and m- some of that just being in the last couple of years you know i'm uh we've had to we've watched it for for a couple of different things now yep <laughs> all right soul man what you got I also. Someone's wearing his head, his uh, headphones, kind of like he's making a homemade Bane mask. Like, hold on, look at me real quick. I'm taking a picture. I'm going to send it to him. All right, Solomon, answer the question. I also put this. Now I'll put my deck through. Oh, I, I put, I picked this in Cornfield. Um, This one was, okay, I never watched the movie edition of it, but... You have watched the episodes with him. I watched the episodes. All right. I put Up, Up, and Away. I think the first part is great, and then I feel like I wish it kind of held off a little bit more before it just jumps to Metropolis, but it's great. Um, so Nate's got Super. I have Up, Up, and Away. We have two cornfields. I feel like the average is going to be Up, Up, and Away. We, we savvy on that, team? Oh yeah, good to me. yeah. All right, the next one is All Star Superman. Superman All Star. Uh, Mr. McKenzie. Now it's, take it's funny. <laughs> my, my thought on this movie has changed a lot in the last um, couple of years. Um, also, listening to your podcast episode about it, um, you know, not too long ago, uh, and what reading the comic book, you know, I was disappointed that they missed so much of the comic book in this movie. But when you actually just watch the movie for itself and just don't worry about the comic book, I, it's actually a really great movie. And it's really something that any Superman fan would be, you know, needs to watch. Uh, I watched it again in preparation for this episode just so I can get my, just re- remind myself of it. Um, really enjoyable. Love the, the characters and it. Love the way that the voice actors portray their characters. Um, like I said many years ago, I would have been, I would have given it a core feel, even you know, even going down as far as the Phantom Zone. But for me, after watching it again and thinking about a lot of those uh, traits I just spoke about, it's an up, up and away for me now. All right, James. Oh well, um, James is like, I mean, like, it's a kryptonite for me, fellas. Oh no, Peace. no uh, <laughs> it's 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 in Phantom Zone for me. Um, oh, it's not our first not... zoner. <laughs> Our first zoner, guy. For me, right? yeah, no, no, yeah. For you. Um, Tom had a zoner. <laughs> it it is a first zoner. Um, you know, and and not for it not being a a good movie and a decent streamlined adaptation of 
of the comic book storyline. Um, I enjoy it. I've watched it many times. Um, I, I know it's getting a, an anniversary 4K coming out uh, here is. real soon. I don't feel like it deserves it, but okay. So, um, I mean, yeah, I, I would. I'm I'm okay with the. I, I only have this on DVD. That's how long ago you know I got yep, it when it came too. out. Um, I bought this in that magical thing I told you about, where it was like five movies for twenty bucks, and someone had like sold half of their films at the time there. So I bought like all of them that they had come out. Oh, uh, I mean. I bought this I bought this when it dropped. Like when these movies were, were coming out, I was I, I knew. Like I was there every Tuesday when it came out to get my new um my new D C animated movie. I um, I was like that I rented them and everything and I started buying them some of them and then I eventually just started collecting all of them. Um, I think it was about the flashpoint time. I started buying them used from the video store. And then I just, after that was like, Nope, you just buy them all as they come out. Like so, James, it's a great story. Um, like I said, like I said before, the only thing that I don't like on this list is kryptonite. Um, so it's not like, it's not like I can't put this in and watch it again right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yeah. I think Christine, I'll get, I'll get there. Okay. Solomon, what did you put it as? Superman. Uh, All-Star Superman. I put it in Phantom Zone. All right. So put, so I put it in Cornfield. And I, I have a weird relationship with it. I agree with everything Nate said. I think it's a very good straight line, streamlined movie. But I still feel like there's certain parts of it that as a movie, I think could have been a little bit more like pace wise. But I think it's beautifully done. I think it looks good. It was a tough task. That Dwayne McDuffie, God rest his soul, um, had to do for it. I do enjoy it. I think Christina Hendricks uh, as Lois Lane has a great Lois Lane. She should have been Lois Lane in live action somewhere. I don't care where. Uh, she could have just done a commercial. She would just do, you know, whatever. Um, but, yeah. So we have – Nate, you put it in Up, Up, and Away, right? Yeah. Uh, Salma has it in Phantom Zone. Actually, I changed my mind. I put in Kryptonite. Dang, Salma still. <laughs> wow, we're gonna rewatch this one, dude. Cause you gotta understand. I respect your opinion. Um, it may it may be a little more up here for for the kid. You know what I'm saying? And that's a good point too. That's why yeah. I, that's why a lot of times I like to use him as a sounding board. I. But I think we're just gonna collectively agree it's Cornfield. I've never watched it. Yeah, yeah you did. I don't remember. So I don't I literally do not remember Red Sun or this Superman. Guess what we're doing? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you did because you watched Red Sun with me like three times. Okay. I don't remember. Next one. Uh Battle, Battle for the, Super the Super Sun. Suns. All right, quick. All right. Dad. Wait, we gotta start with Nate. It's always with Nate, Nate quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, mate. <laughs> oh, oh you want me to be quick? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's just he's excited. So <laughs> Nate, what do you rank Battle oh. of the Super Sons? Um, well, I watched this not too long ago and we actually spoke about it on my pod- podcast, Tyler. And, um, I, I really enjoyed this movie. I, I thought it was fantastic. I haven't read the comic books of these, these characters. Um, but when I watched it, I just had so much fun watching, um, you know, the kids, uh, you know, Robin and, and Superboy. And it, yeah, I, I enjoyed it immensely. Uh, I hope they make a, a sequel to it. I, I'd really, uh, and hopefully it comes out in the next, uh, you know, 12, 24 months, but we'll just see what. You know what happens with DC moving forward, especially in animation. You know they've mentioned a lot of live live action and TV shows, but they haven't really spoken about animation in, in any way, shape, or form that I'm, I'm aware of. Especially, you know, Superman the animated series was supposed to come out this year, which is, is basically gone away to the wayside that I've been noticing. But yeah, for me I, overall, um, I enjoyed it. Uh, up, up, and away for me, and I hope there's more to come. All right, James. Um. Crap, which one are we doing? I got Super distracted. Sons. Super Sons. There we go. <laughs> at least you're honest. Yeah, I got distracted there. Um, I was looking ahead at something for the week. <laughs> it's my fault. Um, Super Sons. Uh, I, you know, really, really awesome um, movie. And I think, you know, since it came out and since people have seen it, they are like, are we going to get this in live action? You know, 
Um, it's a super. It's a super, right, very, very fun movie. Simon, where you got it, buddy? Um, I had fun watching this with my dad. This was good a movie. My sister, my sister. Well, let's say. She- just to let everyone know, when I got this, it got dropped off by Amazon. I opened it, showed the kids, and they actually sat down with me and watched it. Like, they weren't up and around flipping and flopping. We sat there on the couch, the three of us, and watched the movie. Excellent. It was a great viewing experience. Janine was a little mad we watched it without her, but I was like, the kids were so excited. It was a great experience. But she was still mad at us. Um, yeah. Th- this Super Sons movie... This was so awesome. I like um how um they went to the Batcave. Um Superboy meets Robin. Robin was just acting cool. He didn't want to be his friend. But but um I think I need to watch it again. Let's do it. Let's watch it with your mom. Yes, let's right. watch it. Um All right. we're off also, to watch it again, you guys. See ya. <laughs> So, so Solomon, you put it as super, right? Hold on. God, chill down. But I also love as the Superman, Batman thing is still bonding. And um, I put it as super. It was v- the most amazing film. I mean, not the most amazing, but it was probably, if I had to say my top 10 supers, I feel if I had to say. There's 14. My top ten and five, I'd I would put it in number two. All right, so that's how good a movie it was. All right, and I, and I like the bag I saw. I put it as super. There's there's no question about it. It's it's a great film from for Superman for John. Like I loved it. That's all I can say. For okay, Damien and and um to watch as a family. Side. Yeah, I mean we're gonna watch it with Jania now. We need to. We've been wanting to, but I guess we just have the reason now. I see. Okay, so the next one. Superman, Man of Tomorrow. The first of the Tomorrowverse. Take it away, Mr. McKenzie. Mr. (laughs) McKenzie. This one, it was interesting when it first came out. um, The first thing that appealed to me, which which was really different, and was was the animation style. So it, it took me a while to get into... Watching, watching it, I must say, but uh, again, watching it again recently for this podcast, um, I love the fact that there's a new origin story. Um, I like the way that it started, how, you know, how Clark was, how he tried to come to find himself. I love the way that Martha made the suit. Um, you know, Lobo, uh, who doesn't love Lobo? Like, he's one of my favorite characters from the animated series. I love the fact they brought him in. Martian Manhunter, um, you know, Parasite. Uh, Reddy Jones, you know, to me, that's just all animated series just coming back into this this movie. Um, is there parts about it that could have made better? Uh, absolutely. Um, and I was having an hour between Cornfield and Up, Up and Away, but uh, as you were talking about at the start of the episode today, um, let's think about positive stuff. So for me, it's Up, Up and Away leading off in the New Tomorrow series of the animations of this animated style. So, yeah, we'll go with Up, Up and Away. All right, James. Um, yeah, I mean, a kickoff to the tomorrow verse, uh, the Lobo, uh, the, the, the tease of Batman in it, you know, the expansiveness, the, uh, 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 Parasite, Lex Luthor, um, you know, this, this Superman learning who he is, um, yeah, it's, it's an up, up and away. Okay. Solomon. Where do you I... this? Ooh, this one. I love this one. I mean, this one was so amazing. Um, we have watched this one quite I a few also times. At the end, where he, where the parasite explodes, and his friend dies. This don't make me sad. I this movie changed the way I drink coffee. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? <Yeah. laughs> really? So, what did you rank it, buddy? I ranked the super. And I did up, up and away. So, I just feel like it could have it could have had a little bit more uh, towards like a little bit in the detail in the stories, but. So we're putting it. 
So we're putting it as goth up, as, up and away. As a, as a collective, we have it as up, up and away. All right. The next one is Superman, Shazam, The Return of Black Adam. Oh, this one's it's funny. a short, but it's worth mentioning. Nate. It's it's funny. Um, I've never watched it until yesterday. I've, I've so many to- so many times I've wanted to buy uh, to, you know, I should have bought it when it first came out on Blu-ray when I first saw it. Um, we've spoken about it before previously, and I thought I-, I need to watch this, and I'm so glad I did. I I enjoyed every 26 minutes of it. Um, the only reason I rated it as an up, up and away, and not a super, which I should have, was mainly because I wanted more. Um, yeah. the, the 25 minutes was, it was just so action packed in the whole, especially with you know the Black Adam movie out not too long ago. It, w- it was fantastic, I, I loved every minute of it. And like I said, the only reason I rated it the way I did is because I wanted more. So, up, up, and away for me. All right, Mr. James Cole, the Superman of Red, the warm teddy bear. Go. <laughs> uh, this this short is is fantastic. You know, um, it is it is just an excellent bit of storytelling, um, character driven, heartfelt. It's so good. It's a super. Solomon. Do oh, and I must it? say, I love the coloring of it too. Yeah, the art and the coloring. Yeah. Ah, uh, ah, uh, hold on. Do you smell it? The Solomon's cooking, and it's an up, up and away because. I want the movie. I mean, I, I thought it was, I thought it was half an hour long. I didn't know. I can't keep track of minutes or hours. I mean, I can't keep track of hours, but not minutes. But so I put it as up, up and away, up, up and away. Okay. Well, I put it as super. I but I do agree with Nate. It should have been longer. Uh, I hate that it wasn't longer. I love it because I think George Newbern has one of the greatest speeches um, given by Superman to Billy about just being good and the importance of being good and what that looks like and what that means. Um, So I put it as super, uh, but I do wish it had been longer. I think you could have made a a longer film out of it. Um, So... Yeah. Uh, so, what would we average it out? What do you think? We will average it out as super. As super? Okay. So, the next one. This one always has a special place in my heart. Right, James? <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure I know which one this one is. Superman versus the Elite. Mr. McKenzie. <laughs> um, remember back when we spoke about this movie last time, uh, Like the only negative to me in this whole movie is probably the animation style. Uh, but the actual storyline itself to me um, is an overall super. I, the only reason that I say that is just because of what it represents of Superman, the character is the fact it just shows that yes, Superman's good, but you know, everyone says, but you know, why are these people still allowed to live? Why are we still bringing them back? Um, it also shows if Superman goes to that next level and kills, uh, you know, the, the kind of power that he represents and what he can prove, but just the fact that what he does um, in this movie, um, I just think it's a true representation of the character and it, other than the animation style, but for me, it, it's a super. All right, Mr. James Cole. Uh, Superman versus the Elite is a super. Um, great movie, great story. Um, you know, I mean, the, the ideals of Superman questioned the, uh, the Superman showing how scary it could be if he went that far, um, just overall so good. Plus, you know, I mean, it's the first thing I ever talked about with you. So exactly. I am. Yeah. It's definitely a super. (laughs) <laughs> All right, Solomon. I'm gonna let Solomon talk here, but I think me and Solomon need to ha- have a sit down, heart to heart, and rewatch this movie. But I'll let him talk, Solomon. You put Superman versus the Elite where? I put in Kryptonite because I, I never, I, I don't remember it. Okay. I part of me have my, I have a bad memory, but I, I had to put in Kryptonite because I didn't remember it. But um, if I, if I watched it, I, I've heard. Well, I probably put it in super if I watch it again. All right, so him and I are gonna watch that one for sure together. You know what we'll do? 
What? You know what? We should watch all of these. We're gonna download it to the iPad and we'll watch it tomorrow. We have to take the two and a half hour drive down for Caleb's. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Lovely. So that's what we'll do as we drive down for Caleb's tomorrow. So we'll watch Superman vs. the Universe. I love this. I love Friday because because I went to my cousin's birthday party. He turned ten. Somebody's yeah. Yeah, I the game room. I play Super Smash Brothers. I I play basketball. I play Minecraft. I. He always beat me in injustice. I put it as super. There's really no other explanation. My only negative is I don't like I go to a the place. animation as great, and I I don't like the animation on Superman Brady as much. Birthday. But and tomorrow, it's not horrible animation. I get to see. Um, but it's a super. All right, so we're almost done. We got three more to go. The next one is Superman, Batman, Public Enemies, Mister McKenzie. Uh, this one, I always have a lot of fun watching this movie, uh, you know, especially with, you know, I love a Smallville as well, uh, you know, um, Alison Mack obviously voices Pell Girl in this movie as well, and and also had, you know, we brought back some of the voice, original voice actors, you know, from Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, Superman the Animated Series, Batman the Animated Series, so there's a lot of nostalgia, um, and it's basically a rip-off straight from the comic book, you, the character's the, the designs are fantastic and are perfect. And it's mainly, that's the reason why I've rated this up, up and away, mainly for the, the enjoyment factor that I get out of watching this movie, even though I know they've could have gone to a lot more detail with this movie, just like we've spoken about previously, but yeah, up, up and away for me. All right. Teddy bear. Um, so Superman, <laughs> Batman, public enemies, that, that's a super for me. Um, you know, I, I, I love how they duplicated Ed McGuinness's art for it. Um, it was very like cartoonish. Um, it was one of the first animated movies they did that brought back some of the old cast members. True. Um, at the time, I was stoked that Allison Mack um, played Supergirl. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't cringe time. when I hear her in it, but you know, we all have a little tarnish on that unfortunately um yeah. but you know like i said earlier like the the tran the and it's kind of cool how at the time they changed up the art style from public enemies to apocalypse because they changed the artist from um uh public enemies to supergirl in the comics during that during that run um but this is you know it's it was. It's really fun. Uh, it's really action packed. Um, it's got. It's got a lot of uh, good. A uh, lot of good characters, uh, heroes and villains, and uh, you know, it's it's one of those. It's one of the movies that start. You know, got me back into buying some trades and stuff, getting some, getting some books on my shelf. It's also the one that not many people know that Superman was actually based off James. They actually used him as a model. They were like, let's let's draw this. All right, Solomon, Superman, Batman, Public Enemies. Um, well, I put it in Cornfield, but I, I actually might move it. Okay, where do you want to? Where I do you think you want to play? I'm gonna move it to Super. You're gonna move it to Super. I this one. I like this one. It was actually one of my favorites. Uh, you know what? I have it in up, up, and away. But the more I think about it, I think it's a super. So we'll put it in our collective superness. Hey, kryptonite. <laughs> just click kryptonite. My my dictionary just uh pulled up kryptonite. <laughs> I'm like, no dictionary. <laughs> okay, so the next one is the world's finest, which is a crossover between Batman, the animated series, Gotham Knights, whatever they called it. I don't remember. And Superman the Animated Series. So, oh. Nate. Yeah, that, uh, just off the bat, that's a super for me. Um, it was so much fun in the animated series, bringing across Batman for the first time. The Joker, you know, Mark Hamill, Kevin Conroy, you know, that, those voice actors are incredible. Just to bring that to Superman the Animated Series. Um, you know, and if you actually look at IMDb, you know, the overall scores of the whole series, this is always what, one of the highest rated episodes. And the fact that they turned it into it, like, you know, a movie uh, was fantastic. Uh, yeah, super for me and it's something I can always go back and watch over and over again. It's just so much fun. And I love when they bring these characters together. So, yeah, super. All right, James. 
Um, World's Finest is uh, up, up, and away. Uh, it's it's really good. Uh, you know, it's still jarring every time. Doesn't matter how many times you see, but that that style of Joker. Um, you know, with no lips and beady eyes. But yeah. <laughs> Um, other than that, I mean, the way they find out about each other, the way they look at each other, the way they track the the dynamic between Superman, Batman, um, the the switching of the villains, the Joker going after Superman, um, yeah, it's it's a very awesome crossover. I remember watching it back when I was a kid when they when they put it back to back on TV. <laughs> That's a good day, Some what are you doing over here? What, why are you going to put... What, give us the explanation here. I don't remember it. You know what's funny? As you and say I that, say but I watched this thing probably four times with you as a baby when I when I used to take care of you. I don't remember when I was a baby. I remember. I don't remember anything. Well, man, we watched this. Not, okay, here's a little thing I've learned. You watch stuff with your kids when they're four, five, six, maybe even seven, and you think they remember it. And here they are, eight, and they're like, I don't remember that kids i put it as a super or i, I teeter between super and, hey! and away i'm a kid um i'm not a kid. and my one thing is like i the and like james I'm said the animation the very shark eyes of the joker um the you know that weird like it is a movie but just kind of like superman uh where it still kind of has the commercial break fade outs sure. and you're like hey just just you know put it as a movie <laughs> um but yeah, it, it's great. This is this is the proper way to introduce a Superman and a Batman together in a film. Um, oh. The best way, but you know we won't go down any rat holes. Okay, last one, Mister Nathan McKenzie, ho- host of Superman the Animated Podcast. How do you feel about uh, Superman Doomsday? Uh, I was really excited when this movie first came out back in two thousand and seven. It was the first. Uh, you know, adaptation movie they brought out, um, you know, minus all the, the Batman animated movies that came out previously uh, and obviously uh, Brainiac Attacks, which we're not going to talk about again. Um, <laughs> Never and, again. <laughs> but, but, at, but at the time when I first watched it, it was, it was exciting. I, you know, it was, hard, it was hard as well because, you know, just watching the animated series, then watching this, I was confused. I was, you know, not wondering what was going on, not realizing that wasn't the same character, wasn't the same characters and everything like that from the animated series. It was a, a movie on its own. But once I went past all that, um, I enjoyed it. Uh, and then reading the death of Superman after that, uh, like I said, I didn't read a lot of comic books when I was younger. Um, then, and then when they released the death of Superman and the reign of Superman, I realized, okay, that they, they did what they, they could do and did what they had to do with this movie, but there's so much they missed. Uh, the movie itself on its own identity is good. Could it have been better? Absolutely. And what we've seen, what it could have been. So I was on the cusp between Cornfield and Phantom Zone, but for me, I'll, I'll give it a Cornfield just because it was the start of what we see today. And um, yeah, that's a, a Cornfield for me. Now over to Ollie with the weather. Ollie? It's going <laughs> to rain. <laughs> Thanks, Ollie. <laughs> um, <laughs> Superman Doomsday. Uh, I mean, kicked it all off, you know, um, the, the very beginning doomsday showing up, um, being that unstoppable force, the, uh, the fight that they had was kind of like the biggest thing. Um, one of the biggest things they had done in animation at that time, you know, uh, we had just seen, we may not have even seen the Shazam versus Superman fight in justice league yet at this point. Um, but it was, you know, the, the beginning up to the death of Superman was, um, you know, was just really awesome. Uh, uh, James, um, why am I blanking on friggin' Spike's name right now? James Marsters. Marsters. There we go. That's it. There you go. Um, There was like three different... M last names that were flipping through my head and I couldn't name James them. James Marsters, James Marsden, James uh, Marston. Yeah. <laughs> so Max Goof, Cyclops, 
and Spike. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, he did a, a fantastic Lex Luthor. Um, they did an interesting clone storyline. You know, they kind of did something to kind of give you the return of Superman. Um, they had some interesting bits throughout the middle. Um, the the Lois Lane, um, fi- you know, knowing who it was, going to talk to um, the Kents, at, uh, Martha, after, um, after he passed away. And then his return, um, the fight between the two was pretty cool. Um, I mean, it kicked it off, you know, it's, it's not, it's not the biggest thing these days. I gave it a phantom zone, um, but it's nostalgia. I do, I do really enjoy it. And it's, and it's, uh, you know, it, it kicked off everything that we're still buying these movies today. And talking about on a podcast that I don't really think was around really at the time. All right, Solomon. Talk about your experience with Superman Doomsday. I love this movie. This movie was a good movie. I, I was, this movie was a good movie. I He's watched it a lot. I've actually caught him humming the theme song from this movie. Oh, yeah. And then the score was great. Um, and like I said earlier, he has a love for Doomsday. I don't. Don't, don't ask me why. Don't. I don't. You love Doomsday. I used to. You still do. You said that the other day when you got your figure. You were like, I just like Doomsday, Daddy. I mm-hmm. like a little. Not mm-hmm. a lot. Sure. But Solomon put it. What'd you put it as, dude? What'd you put it as? But I put it as super. As super. And it can be super. Um, you like, you like how I talked it up? And yeah. then I was like, it's a phantom yeah, zone. <laughs> I, put it, I put it in Cornfield. I'll just, I'll just jump to it. Um, I like the first 20, 30 minutes, half of it when, you know, we up into the fight, but it's really the back half where they do the, their version of the abridged return that I feel like I just kind of were like, huh? Like it's okay. But I feel like it kind of fell apart there. Like I, I almost would have preferred a, a more build up to where the movie was just the battle more of like a death style, but I put it as a cornfield. Solomon, we got a. It's an average, man. No, no, no. All right, we're gonna wrestle. No. We're gonna wrestle. He's trying to. He's trying to put this on super for the group. No. no. Yes. Look, look. Me and Nate both had cornfield. Okay. I know, but, but it's look, the best Superman look, movie. Look, me and Nate are here. Okay. You're up here. James is down here. So the laws of averages puts it right here. No. <laughs> no. 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 Yep, that's no. how math works. No! Solomon, you, you're good no! at math. No! No! Dude, you're really no. loud. Okay. All right. I'm going to spank this child. No, not just joking. I'm not going to spank no. my child. Um, but, okay. So we, we've ranked all the all the movies. And I think we got a pretty good list. I think we did well, fellas. What do you guys think? Oh, yeah. I sent you a picture of it. I got my, my list is like 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. All the way down because it's like all of them I like, and then the one I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, I, we did that. Was fun. It was, it was a nice kind of break from just talking about the same old stuff. Uh, now we are going to pop in with a couple of quick, uh, just pieces of news. What's up, Mama? Um, Solomon, why don't you uh, head out there and get some medicine you're no. looking for? No. Oh, okay, okay. Cool. I'm for this. Medicine. All right. He's got toothache real bad. Okay, so we learned the Superman 1, 2, 3, and 4 are being released and coming to 4K. Um, I'm not going to buy it. And the same reason I didn't buy Superman the movie when it came to 4K is it's the theatrical cuts of all the movies. I prefer the extended cut of Superman the movie. Because it has the gauntlet scene and a, and a couple other small scenes. And if they were to release a 4K like the Blu-ray collection I have, where it also includes Superman Returns and the Richard Donner cut of Superman 2, then I would buy the 4K release. But I love that Blu-ray box set. The only thing that that thing is missing is Supergirl the movie. But it has all the special features and everything you could possibly want in it. 
that is what I need to do because my Superman movie, uh, my older Superman movies, um, need to be updated. I do have like the best set that they had, you know, back mm-hmm. in the day that had um, uh, Superman versus the Mole Men and all the Fleischer cartoons and all of that, but. I do. Uh, I do need to upgrade my my Superman set to that Blu-ray set. It's. I mean, just the special features alone, the documentaries, the Superman, the Mole Men, the like you said, the Fleischer cartoons, the documentaries, and then even um, if you want to, you know, really kick yourself in the face, watch the Super Pup. <laughs> that's a that's uh. tough stuff. All right, so that's coming, and like I said, I'm not I'm not getting the 4K until uh, I get the edits I want. Uh, Superman and Lois season three, we learned that was cut from 15 episodes to 13 episodes. Uh, my only thought with that is hopefully that maybe they're allocating the budget for those other episodes and spreading them out through the others so that we can have more top tier action sequences and effects. You know, um, that's just me hoping. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It's uh, it, yeah, they're bringing back, they're bringing in a, a new Lex Luthor. Um, I can't remember his the actor's name, but I remember him from uh, Band of Brothers. Actually, that's where I know him mostly from. I know he's been obviously a lot more other stuff since then. Um, but I'm interested in seeing what he does with the character, and uh, yeah, interesting to see where season three moves forward. Um, yeah, it should be fun. Yeah, I, I'm with you, buddy. Like, <laughs> I'm I'm ready for it. Um, I ran a poll. On our on our Twitter, and it was where do people prefer the Justice League, the Watchtower or the Hall of Justice? Now, just real quick before I read the results, where do you prefer the Justice League, Nate? Uh, only because of my love for the Justice League animated um, series. To me, it's the it's the Watch the Watchtower. That's okay. uh, that's that's my that's me. James, um, I prefer the Watchtower. Um. You know, I I like having the history of the Hall of Justice, um, but I I like having it kind of be like a an earthly front for the the Young Justice. Yeah, like 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 the way it is in Young Justice. Absolutely. Solomon, where would you rather have the Justice League up in space in the Watchtower or in the Hall of Justice on Earth? The Watchtower. Okay. I mean, I mean, I mean. The Hall of Justice. Okay, I, I'm I kind of torn. Uh, I like the Watchtower um, because of like Nate, my love for the animated series. But the poll results with 97 people. Okay, Hall of Justice 53 percent, Watchtower 47. Oh wow, pretty close. Yeah, you know what I would have loved to see though is the Hall of Justice get utilized in the CW. Oh, you mean that thing they set up in Crisis that just they just let go, you know, and everything fell apart? <laughs> All right. Next thing was J.J. This is a no surprise. Like, this was one of those things that we just kind of said, duh, but we got official. The J.J. Abrams produced Justice League Dark show has been officially scrapped. Yeah, we kind of figured that was happening. Yeah. Um, yeah. After the Slate announcement and the fact that J.J. Abrams... I think he signed on in like 2019 or 2018. It feels like that's how long it's been. And he's like produced nothing. Maybe it was 2019, maybe 2020. If I'm it, but yeah, uh, I know I was living at my old house. So it's been like at least three years for COVID. See, that's what I feel like too. But, but just before, maybe it was 2019. I, can't. I, I actually forgot about it. <laughs> he signed on that big deal. To do. Like, <laughs> He signed on that big deal to develop uh, stuff for DC, and he's done nothing. And that makes me mad because he could have done something great. So, JJ, you let me down. Okay. The Penguin series is about to begin filming. They're film. They're starting here, I think, in March or next week. I can't remember. Um, but it is said that Robert Pattinson will appear in an episode as Batman. And they will be filming in New York when they start. And he did just arrive in New York. Ooh. Um, so that's cool. I like that. Yep. I'm ready for the penguin. Um, this one's kind of a no-brainer, but it was addressed. 
James Gunn did say that Peacemaker season two is being delayed as he finishes the script for Superman Legacy and will follow sometime after the Waller series. So like we said before, Waller's kind of like Peacemaker 1.5, but we will see Peacemaker season two somewhere in the future. And then the last little tidbit I have is we got our first kind of photo of Joaquin Phoenix and Lady Gaga uh, from the set of Joker 2. And it really is just a pic. It seems like it's when she's still very much Harleen. And I'll show you, buddy. Where did he go? Hold on. I'm looking for it. But I had to say, I oh, say uh, yeah, I mean, he's in some some runny makeup and she looks like Lady Gaga. So, I mean, <laughs> enough said. Um, the uh, <laughs> that's when they arrived yeah. on set. Uh, it looks like it looks like yeah, he just came out and was like, it looks like he just kissed her in it because of how his red is runny and she has red on her lips and she looks happy and he's smiling. So, there we go. That's the news. Um, what was the the last thing you had said before Lady Gaga? Joaquin Phoenix? No. But before the the image. What was the last bit of news before that? Oh, Peacemaker season 2. Oh, yeah, 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 Peacemaker. Um I had something to say that and I blanked. <laughs> um yeah, Peacemaker, uh I actually just started watching that again and it's kind of like the perfect Some example of an established world and you jump in like you don't get introduced to peacemaker in the in in the movie or the show until he's long been peacemaker and has been imprisoned for his for his crimes for his murders um like you this is this is a perfect example of of diving into an established world and it working because you're telling a good story. Um, I agree. And I will say, like I told you about before, when I did the Peacemaker uh, rewatch, was it's a cool show to watch, but binging it, it you really pick up the humor. It starts to wear a little bit. The, the, the very childish humor will start to wear on you after a little while. Binging it, you're like, okay, it's a little much. But hey. That's the news. Um, Nate, final thoughts? Plug your show? Yeah. Um, so I've been on hiatus for a little bit, just working out work-life balance, but now I'm looking at getting back into it again in March. So if you're looking for any, to listen to a bit of Superman animation, it's our Superman the Animated Podcast on all your Play, favorite place you can find your podcast um, or you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Sup Animated Pod or you can find us on Facebook at Superman the Animated Podcast Alright, James, final thoughts um, Watch Superman <laughs> <laughs> um, You know, I'm, I'm just kind of in uh, in some standby mode right now. Um, you know, we got, we got a new, we got some new films coming up this year and that's like kind of my primary focus. All right. So what's your final thoughts? <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know, but, um, that was a good one. <laughs> Before I take internet, I just I just like I just informed him about the Wilhelm screen because we were watching Lord of the Rings. And we were watching something else, and he's like, "That's the same screen." So then I like educated him, and now he's like, he loves it. So he was like, "I'm going to do this." <laughs> I was on the laugh. But all right, everyone, thank you for being part of our ranking. I hope you enjoyed the movies. Uh, check out, you know, make your own tier. Like I said, I will put the notes. You will get the notes in here shortly i advise you just check them out what is your favorite what is your ranking what do you think's the best what do you think deserves to be kryptonite let us know and remember as always look up in the sky it's a bird it's a plane it's salt we're going to press pause and hear a few words from our other podcasts on press play podcast hello 
Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in. If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite, Supergirl Radio, The Last Sons of Krypton, The Superboy Legacy Podcast, All-Star Superfans, Superman the Animated Podcast, The Aspiring Kryptonians, Always Hold On to Smallville, The Geek of Steel, and Truth, Justice, and Hope. Remember to check out Krypton Report on all social media platforms. Go to linktree.com slash Krypton Report. you find out all of our information. $1 a month, you'll get extra special content that you don't get on the main show, like movie commentaries and whatever else comes out of our mouths. So check it out, patreon.com slash Krypton Report. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Look up in the sky. We just want to say, if you've enjoyed this podcast, please check out other podcasts on the Press Play Podcast Network.